Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit. He signed in my presence uh, the private using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1,000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's just more. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everybody. It looks like we are live at five rocking and rolling. Uh, let me just uh, sort my tablet out so it looks like I, so I can see what I'm doing. And the screen is live. Give me two seconds. Whoa. Hold on, turn that off. Talking to myself, sorry about this. All the uh, pitfalls of doing a live show, so I can just see myself. That should be coming up in just a second. Yes, boom, rocking and rolling, we are there. So uh, yeah, got a few, <laughs> well, there's never a dull moment in Koto, as I've said many times before on every show. But uh, yeah, I mean, just like more information and videos that I want to go through, obviously later on, but we'll go through the statistics at the beginning of the show. So for anybody wondering why we broadcast on uh, Twitch, it's because uh, YouTube have taken down two of my channels already. Then they were preventing me from editing my shows, then they were deleting episodes, and I was just like, you know what, this is absolutely insane, considering I only get like, oh, like 50 views on each video. They don't seem to mind all these shit coiners shilling their shit coins. You know, but when it comes to the genuine Bitcoin, oh, can't have any more than 50, uh, 50 people learning the truth about that, can we? Absolutely outrageous. So every day live at five from wherever I am in the world, I do my best to always get online and keep up to date with the figures so that everybody watching my show knows what's going on. Uh, we upload the trailer onto YouTube and then we put the full episode up onto Streamanity where you can set your own fee and get paid for your quality according to how do you judge what? Well, Page, <laughs> you can get paid, uh, uh, well, you can set your own fee according to the quality that you uh, yeah, you uh, assess your uh, material to be. <laughs> right, let's crack on. So I've been having great fun to, well, not really fun today, but just dealing with shit coiners, you know, like Doge, like goes to the moon. In fact, we'll just start off looking at Doge. I mean, this is just absolutely hilarious. I mean, let's let's have a look at this. <laughs> uh, and I've got a great video about short selling later on to uh, to explain it to everybody. Like, okay, so uh, that's up says, uh, you know, 174. I mean, look at that. <laughs> that is just absolutely hilarious. Like, honestly. <clears throat> so like, you know, 510% uh, since, well, like just, just over 24 hours ago. Like, uh, abs absolutely ridiculous, you know? 
Um, and so like Doge goes up and then suddenly thinks that, uh, you know, people shitcoiners things seem to think that price gives a coin legitimacy. Oh, everybody's into this now. Everybody concurs. We all agree with the same. It's going to go to the moon. No, it has got no fundamental value. I had some Doge douchebag, uh, like, you know, tweeting me earlier on, going, yeah, but you don't understand. There won't ever be another Dogecoin. There's no other meme like it. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, give me a break. Like, literally, he was saying that because it was Dogecoin, like, that was what was unique about it, and that's what gave it its value. I was just like, oh my God, I've got to, I've got to deal with this douche. I was just like, well, look, I'll amuse him. You know, and just like, I'll, I'll tell him the answers, but as soon as if he ask, if he starts asking stupid questions, as in like going down the wrong route, just simply going to have to cut him off. So I was like, look, just because something is a meme, doesn't mean it has a fundamental value. A meme is funny. Like, laughter and humour is superficial value. Like, that's what it is, it's superficial. Like, because it's funny, there's, there's value in the joke. You know, it's a novelty, but then it wears off. There is no fundamental value in it. And he just he just didn't get it. You know, like just shit coiners with shit for brains. So um, I'm going to start off by by explaining how uh, big Bitcoin, the genuine Bitcoin, you know, the one that's native to the uh, Bitcoin blockchain, which is BSV, gets its fundamental value. So when you, when you start down the rabbit hole, when you get to the bottom... You're faced with a paradox, and this this is what uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and explain. In fact, you know what? Just for uh, you know, just just to get it in people's minds, we're gonna bring up the uh, Bitcoin white paper so everybody can uh, look at this in all its glory while I'm talking about it. So, Bitcoin has to be a commodity. If it is a security, it has a central point of authority or control, and it can be shut down. It is entirely dependent. On that central point of authority. Now, let's say uh, a coin uses proof of work, uh, and proof of work dilutes the central point of authority and control over time, you know, and, and it distributes the network. That's why only a proof of work coin can be a genuine digital commodity that can eventually, that will probably, you know, that can uh, be used as money. Now, if you start a proof of work network and you reveal to the world who you are that means that you discredit the start of the network because you started it there is that central point of influence somebody says oh yeah like let's take litecoin for example charlie lee says yeah you know i uh, i invented litecoin and uh, in fact while we're here we're just going to play this little clip while i'm while i'm on about it no time like the present. We're just going to have a, uh, a quick listen to what uh, Charlie Lee said about his, uh, his own creation, about how it's an absolute piece of shit. So uh, listen to what he said in his interview, and I'll explain it. Here we go. Coming up in uh, just a mo. You created Litecoin, right? So this has to be something like you're incredibly passionate about. Yeah, as most of you probably know, um, I kind of created it just for fun, right? It wasn't... I didn't really expect it to become anything. No, I didn't know that, Charlie. But uh, I know why you didn't expect it to become anything, and that's because he started it. He is the very point of inception that discredits it. It started from Charlie Lee. So therefore, I could start my own network. I could start exactly the same thing. I could call it, uh, you know, lighter shades of grey coin. I could call it, you know, light yellow coin if I wanted to. And I could start exactly the same thing that he started. The problem is the centralized starting point. Charlie Lee has not created anything that someone else just simply couldn't replicate. The point of inception of the network. Now, the only way, so, so, that's, so he is that central point of influence because he started it. So what Satoshi Nakamoto did, and because he realized there was a paradox of this centralized starting point, he started it under a pseudonym. 
so that no one knew who he was. And if you listen to Gavin Andresian in uh, interviews or anything like that, they, he's, they've always said Satoshi Nakamoto was extremely cautious to not reveal his true identity. Like, no trace of him online, like, no nothing. And the reason being is because he knew it was absolutely fundamental and imperative that the network grew and started without that central point of authority and influence from him. So in order to uh, give it credibility and dilute that central point of authority as much as possible, he released the white paper first. And it's this white paper that explained to anyone and everyone what Bitcoin was and how to start the network. Literally everything, all the work was in the peer reviewed academic paper that had been released to a cryptographic mailing list, to a, a group of extremely competent people who could have started the network themselves because they would have understand all the technicals that was in the paper itself. Now, in order to give anyone and everyone uh, um, an equal opportunity to start the network, a reasonable amount of time has to be provided. You can't just simply like, you know, put the paper out and then start it two seconds later and go, well, oh, sorry boys, you missed a chance. You have to provide them with a reasonable opportunity, like an amount of time. And, and in most cases, two months is considered a reasonable amount of time. Now this, this is why he released the white paper on October the 31st. Because October the 31st was Halloween, so therefore it was a, you know, people were distracted. And then the two busiest times of the year are November and December, leading up to the festive period and New Year. So he knew that people were going to be distracted. So, But the fact that people are distracted doesn't detract away from the fact that two months was provided. In fact, it was two months and four days just to be uh, just to just to make extra sure that a reasonable amount of time had been provided you can't say oh it was it was uh, oh, you didn't provide two months well actually i provided two months and a little bit more it was it was four days anybody could have started the network all the information that they needed was in the white paper and then on the 3rd of january 2009 after two months and four days had surpassed he then started the network under a pseudonym and then stepped away from the project. Now, what was exceptionally clever about this pseudonym was the fact that he had to, even then, he had to do his best to decentralize the starting point. So he wrote the paper in English, but he gave himself a Japanese name. So was he English or was he Japanese? His English seemed to be uh, slang English, you know, but the name was Japanese. Now, the reason he chose a Japanese name is because Japan is highly developed, technologically advanced, and politically neutral. If he'd given himself a Russian name, people would be suspicious about his political intentions. If he'd given the Chinese name, people would have the same uh, reservations. If he'd given himself a, like a, a name from a third world country, people would, uh, you know, question his credibility. You know, it was like Japan was the like uh, the country that was furthest away from the Western world, which is where the which is where the paper was released, in a country that had a language barrier that would enable him to stay uh, to stay hidden, and a population size that would also uh, hinder people trying to locate who he was. So then you've got a case of right. So there's the white paper here that's been released, and no one knows who released it, and nobody knows where to start. All we've got is a Japanese name. So, so now you've got the, the starting point divided by two parts. You've got the paper and you've got the author. That's, that's how he solved the paradox of the centralized starting point. But not only did he solve that, he had to actually like unravel it, unpack it, like create um, uh, the starting point with, well, uh, dissolve the centralized starting point. And that's how you do it over time with proof of work. So the network grows um, and it dilutes further as more and more people come in. Now this, this, it's the neutral growth that gives Bitcoin its fundamental value that no other network can compete for. And now, as we now know, um, Satoshi Nakamoto planned to reveal himself uh, after uh, the 1st of January 
2020, after the network had grown for a period of 10 years. 10 years. Now, it's this 10 years of neutral growth that absolutely no other network can compete with. This is what gives Bitcoin its fundamental value as money. It's neutral growth, like not a meme, not anything. I mean, I know I'm sort of like, you know, talking a lot here, but if you're intelligent, you'll probably be able to keep up with what I'm saying. But, you know, these shit coiners, like literally have no idea about this. I mean, all they're, you know, they're spending all day looking at number go up and like making all these like ridiculous assumptions about price. Oh, well, price goes up. That means everybody's going to buy it. And that means it's here to stay. Like, no, it, they don't understand. They, in fact, so many people don't even understand the difference between price and value. Price is social. Price is set in a uh, particular market at a specific moment in time where you have the factors of supply and demand in that market. Whereas value is its potential. What market can it potentially appeal to? How big can it go? Like, you know, and then you have intrinsic value or fundamental value or core value. You know, a superficial value, personal value. You know, but it's, it's the fundamental value that, that Bitcoin has got, the network has got. And then obviously, not only did it have to uh, uh, dilute the centralized starting point, the network itself has to remain neutral. And uh, in fact, yeah, we'll have a quick look at it. The five things that the, uh, the network needs to remain neutral are these. Let me just, uh, let me just bring this up. Do, oh, there we go. Already in the search bar, that's what we like. I think it's probably a third article down. So please feel free to look at all of my articles so you get a really good understanding of Bitcoin if you don't get it. Because uh, if you don't get it, or if you don't believe me or don't get it, I've not got time to convince you. All right. <laughs> like, here we go. So not only did you need to uh, um, create proof of work which diluted the central point of authority, uh, you know, and you know, over time, the network needs these, the five pillars of decentralization. Accountability. So I've said here, Satoshi designed Bitcoin with a chain of signatures to hold all users of the system to account. This way, no one could do anything on the network that no one else would know about. This is what makes all users equal to one another. So if you get a group of nefarious developers you know, wanting to take control of the network, the first thing they're going to do is tamper with the signatures. Just like Blockstream, like implemented SegWit, <laughs> segregating the signatures so they have control of it. Then you've got Roger Ver and his mates adding Schnorr signatures so you can hide the transaction. It's absolutely ridiculous. You need a locked protocol so that it cannot be changed and that no one can control it. You need infinite scale so there's always new market to compete for. Because if there isn't a new market to compete for, it means that those uh, who are economically sustaining the network are going to start taking market share of their competitors, which will eventually lead to centralization. So this is what I said number four. This is essential for a decentralized network as an infinite scale. If there's no competition, there is simply collusion for self-interest and not for the uh, network and its users. Without infinite, scale ability, uh, without infinite scale capability, new market cannot be created and the only alternative is to take market share away from competitors, which leads to centralization. And, lastly, and last of all, you need a fixed supply, which simply means no one can control it. Yeah, and this, this again, is what no, no shitcoiner understands. Um, you know, uh, I've, uh, I, I've, and it's not that it's not like I haven't like not tried to explain it to, uh, to one and all. But um, if you do, if you do want to um, try and understand the the paradox of the centralized starting point, it was the very first article that I ever wrote, because it, because this is what, this is what. Uh, I found at the bottom of my rabbit hole. So this is my journey. And then when I discovered this and I realized that my journey had come to an end, I was just like, right, I get this all now. Oh my goodness me, more people need to know about this. So this is why I started writing about it. And just everything, everything stems from this. All your learning about Bitcoin, absolutely everything starts with understanding the paradox of the centralized starting point. And that's what none of these shit coiners get. Like literally none. Because it's a paradox. It's too much for their tiny brains, you know, uh, to get. And to be honest with you, I think I'm the only person that's ever sort of like, you know, defined it like this. Because, I mean, most people understand that, like, well, you know, it needs to scale, blah, blah, blah. You know, need the technicals and all that. But me personally, I was just like, yeah, well, you know, tech is competition. Like, you know, how can I make sure that my investment is safe? 
What is it that I'm buying? What gives it its fundamental value? And then I realized it was the it was the solving of the paradox of the centralized starting point that is unique to Bitcoin. You know, so then you, when you realize it can only be the Bitcoin uh, network because of how it started, you then look to make sure that those part those five um, pillars of decentralization are intact, and you realize that Core Coin are completely out the window because of Segwit, and um, and B Crash is completely out the window because like Cash Fusion that Roger is uh, you know so proud about and. Uh, you know, Schnorr signatures and just and tampering with the protocol like changing it every six months so it's not fixed like it's absolutely you know, an infinite scale they're not even scaling it oh we need transactions on change first no you need the scale first and then the transactions will come like they like they say in as it field of dreams build it and they will come that's uh that that's what it's all about so uh yeah let's uh <laughs> the newbies who were uh, first on my channel um this this again this is kind of this describes what i've well this illustrates what i have just described uh so this shows you that on the uh, the 24th of august 2017 segwit was implemented and this is what caused all the animosity between the camps because if you are going to change bitcoin you change the name to let other people know that you are fundamentally changing it but instead, they told this cock and bullshit story that, oh yeah, well, we're segregating the signatures because it leaves more room in the block. Oh yeah, the signatures are important. The signatures are absolutely fundamental. But this was back in 2017. And as we know, uh, Craig, well, you know, Craig hadn't planned to reveal himself until at least the 1st of January 2020 in order to give this network its growth. Because it's, like I said, it's the fundamental growth that gives Bitcoin its value. And like, you know, another network might be able to last like maybe five, six, seven years without anybody finding the creator. But 10 years, an entire decade, that's a tough one. And not only is it a decade, it's actually like 11 years, pretty much. If you say like 3rd of January uh, 2009. So it's basically what, 11 years and 362 days, to be precise. Uh, brilliant. Oh no, 10... 10 years yeah 10 10 years and 362 days to uh, to be precise so it's effectively uh, um 11 years worth of neutral growth you know by the time it gets to a certain size you know if anybody did try to compete with uh bitcoin and create uh create a competitor they would have to they would have to keep the new they would have to keep the the growth of the network neutral for 11 years now that is a tough one this can i very much i i think the chances of this ever happening again are virtually zilch literally like virtually zilch you know so uh again for any shit coiners who don't believe me that uh, blockstream fundamentally control btc now listen to what samson mao said in his interview with simon dick twit and max kaiser here we go Bitcoin was created by by the central bankers that enslave you today. It is their scapegoat. <laughs> how do you want? How do you answer those, Max and Stacey? I think the evidence is clear that uh, they do not control it. It, it. There's ten years, almost eleven years now of uh, track record. Yeah, yeah Blockstream I, controls know, they, it. They, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who does? Blockstream. Boom. Boom! That is the bombshell. That is the bombshell. Unbelievable. You know, but these shit corners, they just don't get it. Like, they, they honestly, they honestly just don't get it. So that's BTC taken care of just in two words. Blockstream. I'm sorry, who does? Blockstream. Mentioned twice, just in case they didn't hear it the first time around. And uh, now let's have a listen to uh, Roger Ver bragging about how he loves uh, anonymity. Which again, if there is anonymity in the network, it means that uh, there is no reasonable expectation in trade. And if there is no reasonable expectation in trade, it means no legal recourse can be can be granted if you are using it as a medium of exchange to uh, to trade goods and services. So uh, let's have a listen to Roger bragging about his uh, piece of shit, shall we? Here we go. I have a question here from Sertoshi, defender of Bitcoin. He said, if a cryptocurrency is anonymous, like BCH, I don't think BCH is anonymous, but maybe there is something Check out cashfusion.com and, and you, you combine oh. that with uh, reusable payment codes and you get Bitcoin Cash 
in the same sort of ballpark of privacy as Monero. It's really awesome. So you can check oh, out okay. Cash Fusion. And I always get it wrong. I think it's .com, but it might be .org. So you can check both. CashFusion.com. And there you have it. Absolute piece of shit. And uh, if you wonder why uh, I call it B-Crash, because it's a piece of shit, it's because uh, Roger calls it B-Crash himself. Have a listen to this. Here in Antigua. Oh, let's see if we can get it. Uh, just go use your Visa card. And we're going to really spread Bitcoin Crash across the entire country here in Antigua. <laughs> Good luck with that, Roger. Spreading an illegal... An illegal, unregulated crime coin across an entire country. You absolute fool. Uh, that uh, is all I can say to that. Honestly, I'm just, I'm just, I have utter contempt for these complete shit coiners. So again, just for any newbies like watching this picture here. Um, yeah, I mean, again, we've heard what Charlie Lee said about, you know, Litecoin. The fact that he just exit scammed the shit out of it. And all of these are securities. Because they do not solve the power of, well, it's not even the paradox of the centralized starting point. It's the fact that they do have, they now all have centralized starting points. All these proof of work coins here um, that I've listed as securities, the reason I've listed them as securities is because the five pillars of decentralization are not intact. They either had, they're either unaccountable, or that, well, that's mainly, or, you know, they're, they're anonymous, um, the central centrally controlled i mean it's just it's just they're absolutely insane and ethereum i mean going to proof of work and now they're saying that the supply isn't even fixed you know i mean it's just honestly it's an absolute bag of shit like the the entire the entire market huh um let's see if there was just anything else i wanted to mention quickly on that one uh yeah just so for any newbies that are watching this um the reason it's important that we have a uh, commodity money is because uh uh, we need something that the, the government can, does not centrally control. Now, uh, the government does not centrally control gold, which is why they ordered everybody to give them their gold in 1933, when they, when they, when they knew they were going to start inflating the dollar into infinity, because that would have massively increased the price of gold and increased, and therefore increased the demand for gold. Because gold will have had more legitimacy than their dollar that they've got complete control of that they were printing off a money printing press. And as uh, Ben Bernanke says, uh, when, when they were asked, you know, how do you, uh, uh, you know, how did you bail out AIG? He just said, well, uh, you know, we just uh, use the computer. <laughs> so they don't use the printing press anymore. He said it's more uh, akin to uh, printing money. So akin means extremely similar to. So they're just basically using a computer. You know, this, and then when they use a computer and they print more, it devalues it. And when they, when they devalue it, it means that the cost of uh, goods and services are increasing. And when you're a business, if you're constantly dealing with what feels like increasing costs all the time, eventually your business is going to go bust. But it's not the increasing cost. It's the constant a decreasing of the value of fiat currency in circulation as more and more get printed and this is what so many people don't recognize like they seem to people people are just you know under the assumption that house prices go up they do the house prices go up but the value stays the same it's the value of the money that goes down that makes the price go up that down and, and again i mean yeah shit corners are shit for brains just don't don't get this at all but like, uh, as Voltaire said, um, uh, paper money eventually returns to its intrinsic value, zero, because they literally inflate it into infinity. It can't not go to zero. And then uh, as, uh, as, as it causes more and more problems, as more and more printed, as more and more money is printed, they need to print even more money to fix the problems that the initial printing did. So it cannot ever not go to its intrinsic value at zero. This is why we need a commodity money that is divisible. And this is Bitcoin, the greatest money that this world has ever seen, ever. Uh, just, oh, just conscious of the time there. So I've been going for uh, 29 minutes. Oh, God, I haven't even done coin dance yet. Oh, let's do this, come on. Have a look at these figures. I'll have a look through some of the uh, messages in the op return, see if there's anything there for us. So again, I'm really not bothered about B crash and uh, core coin, the total shit coins. Just going to go through Bitcoin here. So we've got uh, uh, Bitcoin with 2% of the hash rate. Network nodes 2.2. Transactions 33.3. .3. Oh, head of core coin. Get in there. 
Uh, oh, what's this? B crash, 34.1, again like the marketing, but look at this, block size 42.6 in comparison to uh, 35.8 and 21.6 for those uh, utter shit coins. Uh, so we'll just play a uh, spot the biggest block on B crash, oh, they've mined a, uh, a 3.2 megabyte block, that's pretty good for B crash, uh, 3.3, biggest one on their, on their network. Cool coin with a uh, block size restriction, not going anywhere, Michael Saylor. One day you will look at my show and Alex and you will understand what I was trying to explain to you and you'll be like, I don't believe it. Well, the numbers do not lie. They speak for themselves. So you're gonna learn the hard way, mate. <laughs> don't say I didn't try. So, uh, but look at this straight out the gate on Bitcoin Tower with a 13 megabyte block. Uh, huge compared to these other shit coins. And we've got five, four, three, six, three, three, ten megabytes, twelve, you know, absolutely huge, uh, well, in com comparatively speaking. So we'll just see if there are any, uh, any cryptic messages um, left, uh, left on these transactions. So, because we saw a few messages the other day saying, coming soon. So we'll just see what's, uh, see if they've got any interesting messages uh, in uh, in these transactions oh what's this uh, miracle pool <laughs> miracle pool dot net all right uh, mining daddy dot com <laughs> more money daddy satoshi cat <laughs> oh dear oh, this, is, this is hilarious you know, I mean, I don't often look at these uh, messages, but as we're looking for a one that says like, you know, coming soon and uh, talking about coming soon, I noticed in the uh, messages that we looked at yesterday, uh, people were going on about keeping your eyes open. I mean, again, I was just like, eyes open? Uh, you know, is, is that a hint of something? Anything to do with maybe like Tom Cruise? You know, eyes wide shut? Keep your eyes open? You know, I mean, pff, just clutching at straws here, but... You know, it's uh, it's funny. If anybody uh, wants to put a guess in, I'll, uh, I'll ding a dong to anybody who gets it right. Uh, so yeah, any uh, any any messages here? Uh, shout in the chat box. Older blocks. We'll just click this one and have a quick have a quick check. So coin. Oh, so this this uh, on unknown miner. Unknown miner typed a uh, coin gee. <laughs> coin gee on there. Uh, Anything to do with judo? A coin, a coin gi? <laughs> um, anything? Uh, anything in there? No, maybe, maybe I've missed something, but uh, never mind. There we go. But uh, let's have a look at this. Let's go through the graphs and hash rate. Oh, whoa! Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, uh, Bitcoin's hash rate right down. But again, hash rate just simply follows price, which follows value, which follows utility. When it, uh, when it has utility, it can then develop value. When, uh, when it has value, it can then create a price. Or should I say when it creates value, it can then develop a price. And then when it develops a price, the price can be measured against the cost of other goods and services. And then we have a medium of exchange, which is, which is Bitcoin, which is commoditized data sovereignty. Effectively, blockchain technology, really. Proof of work by network again. Cool coin, B crash would stop one day. Uh, hash rate, B crash versus Bitcoin. Proof of work, B crash versus Bitcoin. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> it is 72,000 times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin than cool coin. Look, B crash got absolutely no hope of getting anywhere near that. That is massive. I wonder if this is anything to do with February 3rd that we have had hints about. Feb 3rd coming, preparation for it. Oh, so it's currently 0.6% uh, more profitable to mine on uh, SV. Interesting, we'll have a look at hash rate in a minute. Daily average Bitcoin block size by network, Bitcoin winning. And uh, daily Bitcoin transactions by network. Oh, could that be B crash winning? Hilarious, that's really funny. Uh, daily average Bitcoin transactions per block by network. Ooh, 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 three neck and neck pretty much there. Uh, daily average Bitcoin fees by network, but Bitcoin smashing it. 
fee satoshis bitcoin smashing it uh block reward ratio again like i said that comes with uh comes with price which follows value which follows utility uh blockchain growth by network laughing at b crash they're absolutely hilarious right here we go this is where the politics are global hash rate seven days just like it was yesterday Global hash rate, 24 hours. And Paul pulling their socks up, pushing BTC.com down into fifth. Right, this is the interesting part. So this is core coin. Oh, coin dance, seriously? Every time. <sighs> come on, come on. Oh, spoil the surprise. So this is core coin. Uh, Binance pulling their socks up on, on core coin. So yeah, yeah, Binance macking it hard. But um, they've only got a small amount on B crash, Hathor on B crash, chomping away at the empty blocks for no other reason other than sheer spite. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, Bitcoin. Well, wow, so what's Huobi done? Huobi maybe turned it up on Core Coin. Um, Tal absolutely macking it there. Uh, other mining pools uh, squeezing Huobi. So maybe Huobi didn't like it. But Tal are going nowhere. A tau, see, look at that. Tau are nowhere to be seen on core coin. They're just like, no, that is what you call sticking to your guns. Uh, Mempool, Norpool, yeah, they're not, they are 100% uh, Bitcoin. So uh, my guessing is that other miners are keeping uh, Huobi in check because uh, maybe Huobi is just kind of like, you know, maybe, you know, just trying to head to the bets. Um, just like Vibe, I, I think Vibe ETC are, uh, are probably trying to do the same, you know, because they seem to be on all the chains, just literally just hedging their bets. So maybe that's what Huobi are doing. Hedge betters. Ha! Huh. Uh, but Hathor is definitely a, uh, a Bitcoin miner, and uh, as is Tal, as is uh, Mimple Norpool. But look at this. Uh, Poolin and F2Pool and BTC.com. Again, the three, uh, the three Mac Daddies. Um, gesturing on the chain. Very rare to see all three of them on there at the, uh, at the same time. Wow. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Uh, right, so let's have a uh, quick look at the chain working live in front of our very eyes again for shit coiners who are watching this for the first time, asking what Bitcoin is. Um, this, These are the, the, well, the uh, vertical rectangular blocks at the top. Are the transactions being recognized by the nodes on the network? These are the transaction generators below that. And then we've got the uh, the transaction ID, the input, the output, the type, and the op return. The meme pool is where the transactions are then thrown into. And uh, the miners and the payment processors compete to process the transactions, store them in a block, and then put the block on the blockchain to win the Coinbase, which is currently 6.25 Bitcoin. So as you can see here, we have got a 17 megabyte block. And in the highlighted rectangular box below that, we've got the hash number of the block, the height, who it was mined by, the size, the time, the date, the, ca um, the time and date, the transaction count, which is 15,830 uh, uh, transactions in there. Total fees totaling $5.35. And uh, as we know, we are expecting um, the fees in the block to surpass the, the, uh, the coin base which is about $1,000, which is, you know, 6.25 Bitcoin in quarter one, 2020. So let's just remind ourselves of this epic image. And I say, I mean, literally epic. You know, if this can be done, I mean, this is just absolutely phenomenal. You know, so here we go. Uh, transaction, uh, transaction subsidy. Look, so surpassing the block reward. Crossover anticipated around quarter one, 2021. Something mahusive is on the way, like absolutely mahusive. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Just have a quick look at uh, bit info charts for any newbies who are seeing this for the first time. You can compare all these shit, shit coins across the top, including Dogecoin. Oh my god! <laughs> but we'll do um, average transactions. Um, yeah, per hour. We'll go to log, and in three years. Uh, we'll put uh, Bitcoin in there, obviously, and then we'll add uh, B crash for lulls. And uh, you can see in front of your very eyes. Oh, uh, so the so uh, 
Uh, turquoise blue here is uh, Bitcoin is, is SV, so that's Bitcoin. Um, oh, so this looks like B crap. Oh, we've got Dogecoin in there. Oh my God, seriously? Dogecoin, what the hell? Oh, take that one out. <laughs> what a joke. Literally. Ha! Huh. <laughs> yeah, so uh, B crash. Yeah, the, the uh, transactions every 24 hours. But I mean, look, look at Bitcoin. Absolutely smashing it. Absolutely smashing it. And that is fundamental. That is not a pump. That is genuine utility. Um, you know, it's investment. It's uh, development. It's intellect. And so uh, we're just going to have a quick look here at trends.cash. Trends.cash. Now, this is what no other network has got. So this shows you uh, apps ranking by uh, performed actions. Um, so I guess performed actions will be uh, transactions on each on each app. So uh, whatever router SV is, and then there's a B15.1%, and a TDXP app with 8.2%. Uh, of trans uh, transactions on their own, ranking fourth. Um, but I mean, router SV. I mean, thirteen thousand transactions on there um, in uh, in twenty four hours. So you can see the uh, uh, what like one day, you know, seven days. Have a look at this. Yeah, pretty great stuff. I'm gonna have to uh, check this chart out um, on a daily basis. I think. Yeah, trends.cash. Um, I'll go back. That's what I meant. That was the one I wanted to click on. Back again. And now I'll have a look at value. So this is apps uh, ranking by money spent. So where is this money being spent? Look at, oh, a really x.io. Suddenly huge amounts being uh, being spent on really x.io. That's massive. Uh, I wonder what's bringing that in. Uh, so if we actually go to Bitcoin Blocks Live, and we can see charts here, let's have a look at this. Uh, December 28th. So just looking here, we've got Predict Ecology and Anne, like uh, the Mac Daddies at the moment, Peer Games. TDXP at ranking 5th, Twitch in 6th. Um, Metanet, yeah, 15,000 transactions. So this is over like 30 days. But I mean, no other network has anything like this. Nothing. And because all, all these uh, applications here, they these applications want their transactions recorded on chain. Now, what other um, institute or what other businesses want their transactions recorded on chain? Well, I'll tell you, all of them, particularly financial institutions like banks, they are absolutely paranoid about uh, losing their data because if they were to lose a record of one customer's transaction, they would immediately be fined 10% of gross global profits because it is trust that underpins the entire financial system. So not only if they are, if they, not only would they be fined by the regulator huge amounts, but can you imagine what the share price would do of that business? Customers losing confidence, share price crashes, they can't borrow from other institutions, you know, people would like, customers would leave them, you know, I mean, it, it could be absolutely catastrophic for them. This is what underpins the fundamental value of blockchain technology. You know, and, and none of these shit corners get this. Like, none of these shit corners get this. This is, this is what was so absolutely important about micropayments. Because you can't, like, it's, people do not mind that you can factor in the cost of a thousands of a cent you know, for the movement of a cent. You're really not going to miss a thousands of a cent for the for the movement of, of one cent's worth of value. This is the whole point. You know, like a BTC with their, like, replaced by fee. Oh, yeah, you have to uh, pay a huge amount to get your uh, transaction processed in the block. I mean, it's such a load of bollocks. Like, I cannot stress enough how bollocks it is. And these shitcoin is actually, like, they believe it. Like, just on a, like a, a new level of dumbness that we are witnessing here, you know, kind of like um, in this space. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's have some fun. We've been going for like 40 minutes now. So uh, <laughs> I will mean, tell you what, we'll, we'll, have, we'll just have a quick look at my, uh, my, my profile list and things that I want to go through. There is a really good metric here uh, on Twitch. 
to actually just bring up Twitch here. Check this out. Uh, we'll have a look at some of Dr. Wright's posts as well. Catch up with that. So if you go to Acorn Stacks on uh, on Twitch, they've got uh, Twitch stats here, 24 hours. So if we look at, we can see that over the uh, the previous 24 hours, um, there were Twitch had 827 new users. Now compare that to the uh, uh, 24 hours one day ago. Look at this, new users, 61. So they've jumped from 61 new users in a 24 hour period to 827. Well, that is massive. Uh, yeah, it's huge. It's got, it's almost like, like, here we go, you know? Um, you, I mean, again, you know, shit corners just looking at price all day wouldn't appreciate the change in the figures that we are looking at. You know, these are, these are fundamental value. This is people coming in and using Twitch. So it's an indicator that people are searching out, you know, for Bitcoin, you know? Um, and talking about people searching out for Bitcoin, I uh, posted this uh, tweet for uh, Michael Saylor. Um, just the other day about, yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, a Bitcoin BSV scaling test network hits a new record this week, processing over 9,000 transactions per second at one point on January 26th. Um, yes, yeah, so we can, uh, it's, it's actually in the CoinGeek article here. Check this out. So it was, uh, here we go. 9,232 transactions per second on the scaling test network. Oh, absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. Shit corners can't touch it. Like we need a bit of MC Hammer. Can't touch this. Like absolutely no chance whatsoever. Uh, so uh, so anyway, now that we've uh, had a, uh, a quick look at those, I'll just have a quick look at uh, Dr. Wright's tweets. Um, here we go. Searching this. Two, three. Seriously, come on. Oh, got followers. Here we go. Uh, oh, well, actually, I'll just have a thought then. Uh, and it's completely gone in and out of my mind. <laughs> uh, following Dr. Right, here we go. These are his tweets on Twitch. Yeah, so uh, we'll just we'll just have a look at this uh, this this recent one here. Here we go. So we said. Uh, so we said uh, uh, my mistake was to leave the project too soon, and to trust other others without uh, really explaining things to them. More importantly, um, I really didn't understand what other people wanted to do. I was completely da um, uh, daft enough to believe that when I said the protocol cannot change, that this would be enough to uh, make sure that people like uh, Gavin and other um, st um, stewarding the uh, project wouldn't change it. I don't blame Gavin. Mobs can be difficult to resist. Yeah, too, right? Uh, but, and this is a key point, nobody is going to get rid of me before I get uh, uh, my protocol back in the way I created it. And once that happens, people can build any copy of it uh, that does not call itself Bitcoin to their heart's content. The same way they can build a copy of the uh, internet protocol that is uh, different for the sake of it. The uh, distinction is that I would not let them call it Bitcoin, just as you can't call a copy of Tesla Tesla. In doing this, the irony that people don't get is that I have uh, uh, no power other than saying that the protocol is set. The only power I have is to stop myself exercising power to change the protocol, and that is the power that other people can uh, enforce on me. Yeah, um, just watch this space, people. This is what I want to look at. Check this out. So this is, uh, oh, uh, value's gone up in my wallet. Great stuff. I mean, this is really good. So if you want to uh, make a post uh, on Twitch, uh, so yeah, let's do this. We'll do, uh, uh, actually, notifications. Check this out. So, uh, oh, so um, uh, uh, Marshall Nomad followed me. Check this out. And uh, TD Verge, I can see you in the chat box as well. Thank you for liking my, uh, my post there. Oh, so look, so, uh, so four cents. Uh, I can't remember how much it costs to um, you know, uh, post that. Like three cents maybe. Three cents to post it and uh, receive four cents for the like. And, uh, and uh, Marshall Nomad, uh, Paid uh, eight cents to, well, I got eight cents for him to uh, follow me. Great stuff. So what I do is uh, I go to my followers 
and then uh, that comes up. So uh, the last one, Marshall Nomad, click on their profile, and it's there. Because I've paid for Twitch chat, I open that, and then I'll just write a little personal message to them. So, uh, hi, uh, <laughs> uh, Marshall Nomad. Thanks. Come on. Thanks for following. Cheers, Toshi. And uh, so the reason I just write a little message like that is because uh, I, I I had to go through what like 233 followers, but now I'm up to date with it, and it just means that I've opened up a, a direct chat with everybody. So um, so that's pretty cool. But this is how you post on Twitch. You just simply go to uh, create a post, and then I say uh, uh, live live show test test post wallet use there we go see look 2p to post or two cents to post that twitch it boom there we go view that there we go and i can just go to my uh to my home and there it is live show test post wallet use boom on twitch and uh, you can actually see the uh, the transaction ID in here. So it says, move this thread, uh, copy link, uh, blockchain transaction. And then uh, translate post. But check this out. Go to the blockchain transaction. And you can see it on chain. Stored in uh, Bitcoin files. This is the transaction ID. This is the summary of that transaction. It's got the uh, block hash, the time, yeah, total inputs, total outputs, transaction fee. It's got here, like, you know, uh, Twitch post payment. I mean, it's, it's just such an awesome system. An awesome system. There we go. Well, that'll do. Right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Being going for one hour, 20 minutes, so we'll leave it there. And uh, as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there. Joy given. Same time tomorrow. Catch you later. Get your tweet etched on Twitch. Forever on the Bitcoin blockchain. Do it today at www.jointwitch.com. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity for just 20 cents. Go to www.satoshi.tv. See the link in the description below. Bitcoin, one world, one chain. Yeah, one